Harry and the Hendersons. This is a movie that I watched a year ago, and I will be using it as my prime example as to why I don't like some of the changes made to the Reignited Trilogy. In this movie, George Artist, who became a hunter for his own father. Later on in the movie, after Harry, the Sasquatch, has made a space for himself in the Hendersons' hearts, he escapes into town. Several sightings of Bigfoot make George's father want his son to draw him a picture of the monster he thinks is out there. George knows differently and draws a more accurate picture of Harry. His father is upset by the fact that his son didn't listen to his instructions and draws over the cardboard cutout. He adds gleaming red eyes, some black marks to show opened and fang jowls and claws from the tips of his fingers. His father comments that he should have found a real artist to do his work, and that he at least has talent. George is distraught that his own father would destroy his artwork, and quits his job at the hunting store. So here is where my comparison comes into play. In the original trilogy of Spyro, there is technology and electricity. It all has a very old-timey feel to it, however as none of the technology is too modern. It is more along the lines of Star Trek, or flying saucers and farmers getting abducted, sometimes literally if you're in a particular speedway. My point is, none of it went too far into reality. It was all very much a fantasy, even with some science fiction. Now, a great deal of those aspects have stayed the same, with some changes that are not in line with Toys for Bob's promise that they would stay faithful to the original game, while taking a few artistic liberties. Different looking dragons with interesting designs at every new world, that's awesome. A dragon that is all about watches, maybe time control, pretty cool, and it's not too modern that it seems out of place. That particular dragon had a very back to the future feel to him. Then we get to the barista dragon with a handlebar mustache, gauges in his horns, and a unicorn Starbucks coffee to give to Spyro. This is the epitome of a modern hipster barista. This does not belong in Spyro, as it just feels like the artist involved drew his persona. It does resemble him quite a bit. But sure, it's an artisan trade, so I look past it. Plus, the very modern unicorn Starbucks coffee only appeared in the credits. Finally, we get to the many deal breakers in Year of the Dragon. First, it was the reignited music that played during Uga's Skeleton Friends Bone Dance. Air horns. Just like in various modern memes. Not even classily done. Just for the sake of having a throwback to something popular. Well, thankfully you can turn on the original soundtrack and miss that unfortunate sound. In the same world that this appears, the denizens of Haunted Towers are all hipsters as well. They carry Starbucks coffee cups, they have round, nerdy glasses, and while having glasses itself is fine, but they look too modern, too new. It's messed up. The artist who created these new characters has quite literally messed up how the denizens used to look. Next we have Bamboo Terrace, where the pandas have nerd glasses and sweatpants, or a t-shirt with a bamboo graphic on it. It's definitely different from the before, and we can tell them apart, which is nice. That's not my problem. My real problem is when they sneeze. Normally when a panda sneezes, it, it is something cute. An internet sensation even. I would have been okay with that. But as they sneeze, they dabbed afterwards. They dab every single time that they sneeze. And that's, again, just another way to make the game more popular. Because kids like dabbing. I mean, it's not like the original Spyro Trilogy can stand on its own, so they have to add some dabbing. Otherwise, who will buy the game? Figured, alright, I'm only here for a little bit. I'll just grab Bentley from the next world, and that'll be the last I see of them. So I beat Spike, who looks excellent by the way, and move on to Evening Lake. Bentley speaks as he usually does with his excellent grasp on English, and I enter the portal for Les the Yeti. This is where the final artistic liberty has been taken too far. Change Bombo the Genie to Bob the Genie? Fine. Someone would have probably made a hissy fit about that anyways. Make the enemies wield stone-flinging slingshots instead of gun? Gatling goo guns instead of Tommy guns? 
fine as well. Giving Bartholomew a cell phone that he stares at while speaking to his brother, tapping away at it as if he couldn't care? No. That's not right. I don't care how many children can relate to the fact that Bartholomew can only keep his eyes on his cell phone instead of his brother as he talks to him. I'd even excuse the fact that he wears freaking shoes, even though that's a little on the ridiculous side. At this point, I'm picking my battles. But this isn't how the younger brother is supposed to be portrayed. The reason why this correlates to George and his drawing of Harry is because someone drew Starbucks cups in the hands of creatures who never had them in the first place. This is why I don't want to play the game anymore, even though I made sure to beat it 100% or as close to that in all three games. Basically, I wanted to play Spyro in a way that was both the same and yet updated. I didn't mind the new designs, I liked a great deal of the extra effort that went into some of the characters lip syncing, cutscenes, and various upgrades to the art and life of the world. I like the fact that Sparks can show me where I've missed gems instead of backtracking without any help in every single Spyro game. It didn't work half the time, but it was helpful when it did. I like the fact that I could teleport to any world within the guidebook, which you normally couldn't do until you completely finished the game. The loading screens were a bit long, but that's just time for me to stretch or read a couple pages of a book. I like the fact that a good deal of the voice actors came back and voiced their old characters. Some of them didn't sound exactly the same, but time changes a person's voice. It will not change my opinion on how modern technology and selfies should not be in Spyro. That stuff can stay in Skylanders. Another thing that Toys for Bob said wouldn't factor into the Reignited Trilogy. Well, those new power-up body changes for Spyro are from Skylanders. The mobile game, to be exact. That doesn't exactly belong either, especially since that Spyro is a completely different Spyro. Timelines can be confusing.